Now, BBC Two follows in the wake of Pete Doherty as he and the Baby Shambles go on tour. For six months, the cameras follow him as his turbulent life unfolds before the world's press. With very strong language, Arena.
how did that go, the last implant? Mm. I think I stopped writing for about four minutes. Did you? Yeah, it was just a It was compulsory, wasn't it? It was either that or jail. Uh, not the last one, the one before last. Right. And Things are a little bit calmer in general. Well, they're not really, but I can pretend they are at this juncture at this time of night. It seems to be so. I mean, Jo isn't right. Like, it's not through that door, but it's probably through the next one. If you know what I mean. Is it? Is that? Is is that likely to happen? Do you think? There's a lot of charges piling up, and one or two of them are really serious. But in a way, I've got this thing in the back of my mind that says if I do get an implant, if I do. Keep that damn monkey on my back and stop piping, then yeah, I can avoid jail. But I think there might be more to it than that this time. I might have left it a bit late. Which is why I want to get all these new songs to you before, before the ship sits over. And what was, I mean, what was prison like last time? How, what is it like? I don't want to sound daft, but really it is what it is. It is a prison. You're in prison. You know, you're in a cage. You're literally, you're in a room. That's it. You can't do anything. I'm going to put my cigarette there. You can't do anything. You just. You burst of madness. Or you, like, you want to sing, or you just do. Like, sing out the window. You're in the yard. So, really, it's just a build up of anger and frustration and all the things you can't do. Mm. All the things you took for granted. And oh shit, why do I get caught? Mm. But prison actually, well, it makes me write an awful lot anyway. I become very creative. Painting that room. Did the implant not then? Did you, do you feel if you, when you stop, I was on a curfew at the time, and mm. I was still in the blackmail and robbery charges, a really distorted time. Lots of trouble with Jim, with the manager, and the band, and all kinds of things. Then I was falling in love, and it all came on. Bang, bang. You're alive. Bang, bang, you're dead. Bang, bang, you're up. Um, and there was no let up in the storm because that's one thing that Aaron does give me. It's like a, a, a calming thing, you know, like, even. It's just uh, psychologically as well, it's just that little place you can always turn to and always just put a cloud over everything, whatever happens. That wasn't to be, like, uh, uh, but down in the brown, you know. So, but I feel stronger within myself now, you know, and to be able to not be so psychologically reliant on it, and even physically not. Just throw back to your prison days. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah. legend!
nervous? Well, what is it? Yeah, I'm, uh, it's like kind of apocalyptic, apocalyptic tension or expose, complete uh, expose of like, I don't know, you just you're completely, you're through, you're through with the world. You don't know what to do. Sing some songs, there you go. Mm. Had a couple of strange uh, encounters recently in Plymouth. There was some cultish type group of people who were suggesting I should meet this fellow who's killed someone of AIDS and all this. So, um, mm. Mm. natives mm. getting rushed. Yeah. On with the hello, hello, hello. 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 The Dave and Morag, yeah, we met today. Very nice couple. Sometimes you just really feel like you really don't want to go on. Uh, uh, people say, oh, see, is it much better than like, pushing a wheelbarrow up a plank into a skip all day every day? Well, yeah. In fact, I was more nervous working the first time I tried to do it, running at it. It's Albanian fellow so, you know, saying, it's supposed to be slippy out there. Yeah. That's it. Lager slippy. Lager slippy. Yeah. Lager, lager, lager. Lager bath. Is it? Everyone's going to get soaked. Look over there, sir. <clears throat> Tony Hancock, Sidney James, Bill Kerr, Hetty Jakes, and Kenneth Williams in... Hancock Tafa. <laughs> well, here we are. Situation vacant. Oh! Oh, we're back! We're back. What is it? You're going to have to have a few days in bed. You stay where you are. It's always the same. As soon as I get the situation yes. vacant, page, your back starts. Oh, yeah. Sunday night. I'll tell you, my back is hurting me. Well, it's your own fault. You shouldn't rush downstairs so quickly to tear this page out and burn it. <laughs> I'll beat you to it this morning, though, so here we are. Situation vacant. <laughs> Look, uh, don't, don't let's rush into this. Uh, we're bound to get some work sooner or later on the stage. Let's, let's hang on a little longer. You've been hanging on for 18 months. <laughs> Generally, the main problem we have is getting Peter out of his house. When he's out of the house, he's fine. Um, so normally you have to employ certain tactics. Maybe we'll send Johnny round there to help get Peter up. Uh, or Sally. I used to go around there as well, but I just found it so stressful. I now just tend to stay at home until they're ready to leave. And I just leave. But it's just, you have to just try and use different tactics to get them out of the house. OK, yeah, no, we'd definitely be up for that. That'd be great. Peter will be up for that as well. OK, I mean, I'll tell, I'll, I'll tell him today, but he'll be up for that. We'll come and call the tune for nothing. And just, uh, we'll do the big issue for we do it in one day then, can't we? We'll have a day out. Great, all right, mate. Definitely give her a call, because she's another point of contact with the band, so fantastic. All right, speak to you soon. Cheers, bye. I'm the manager, apparently.
sometimes the band, you know, something will happen and you think, God, this is it, it's over, you know, this, this can't go on. And then you'll have a great, like, Scotland's happened. I didn't, really didn't think Scotland would happen. I mean, on the day of the show, the promoter still bring me up and saying, look, is it happening or not? I said, wish I could tell you. I'm in the same situation. Um, you know, it's happened a few occasions now where me and you have been sitting downstairs at a venue and, and Peter's missed the last plane and you can hear the crowd booing and that, that's the worst feeling in the world, you know, it's, you just feel it in the pit of your stomach. You just, all those kids out there waiting and it's awful. So, you, you know, you think, right, this is it, it's over. You know, we're just gonna speak to him about it and, and if he doesn't want to do it, because you think, well, does he not want to do the show because he doesn't want to continue with the band? But then he's, there'll be some excuse and it'll go on and it's forgotten about and then you play a great show and it's, it's just picks and troughs all the time. So you tend to take every show as your last. We have no management. Um, so I suppose <laughs> playing the shows is the easy part, really. For me, um, the rest of it is pretty stressful, trying to organise getting there. And, and but yeah, I mean, I'll generally, me and Sally will work out what's happening when we get there or how we're going to get there, travelling, etc. I'd love to have management. I think Peter just entrusts certain people that he, he sees. I don't know, I think he finds it maybe difficult, I don't know, in trusting people. It's like you're the fifth member of the band. No, God, no, 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 not at all, not at all. Um, but you're a permanent part of them yeah, as a unit. But, but like a shadow, not like, not like a sort of, I'm just kind of there, because I'm, because I'm not intrusive or anything at all and I kind of do my own thing. character is invaluable to popular newspapers if he didn't exist they'd have to invent him and in a sense they may have invented him they may have encouraged this I don't know but you see he even though by the way no reader no buyer would ever admit to this that they are buying the newspaper because of this but he is part of the package part of the regular bit of a newspaper that people do unconsciously gravitate towards he is the continual bad boy that can be used around which you can build a kind of profile, um, a soap opera itself. How old is he, Peter? What's his name? Is it Estelle? Yeah. I want to call him Peter. You wanted to? Would Lisa not let you? <laughs> <laughs> And how old is he? How old are you? Two years
Don't you know you I think I am? Do. Don't you know I think I am? No. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know. Oh no. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how. Yeah, go Miles. Do you remember Miles? I don't keep coming up here tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah, I think I'm busy. I'll, I'll tidy up first, though. Right now. I'm smiling. Did you wipe your nose on Daddy's coat? Thanks, Mel. Have a little bit. Are you going to take after? <laughs> right. I got my phone. Oh, I'll send it on to you. No, it's my phone. Not phone. Can you grab my suitcase for me, still? Can I go to you? Come on. Exhilaration is the breeze that lifts us from the ground. And leaves us in another place whose statement is not found. And films used to be, you know, tragedies used to be, you know, developed and, and, and screened and invented. Today we like our, our tragedy more real, you know, hotter and fresher. And um, Doherty lives in the sort of imprint of, of the of the great artists, you know, who have who have died for drugs. You know, Jimi Hendrix, um, uh, Janis Joplin, and you know, also in the era of. We have mostly, you know, boy bands today, sweet little boys, you know, who don't take drugs or trash hotel rooms. So, you know, Doherty was different. He, he was retro and fabulous. And, and when he started dating the most photographed woman in the world, uh, you know, the Doherty phenomenon was invented. But I think it's car crash journalism. I think we, we want to see somebody fall apart. And why is that, do you think? Well, that comes from a very, very dark place in the human soul. schadenfreude, to take pleasure in, in the misery of others. It's exciting. For what reason did, did people used to go to public executions? You know, thousands of people would turn up to see people, people be hanged. And I, th I, think it's, I think it's for the same reason. He's in love with a rock and roll world. He's in love with a Ken Stone world. He's in love with a Jenny Jones world. But he don't like his boy job, no. He's in love with a rock and roll world. He's in love with a Ken Stone world. Oh, we're
getting stone world He's in Low River, Jenny Jones world I he don't like this boy, jump, no Hey, hey, shit, up so well Got a bus to the party Just like everyone, you are to go Exactly what you're doing and exactly what you want from it, then it'd be alright, but. Do you think you are? No, not, not, not in something like this. I mean, I'm too, too vain and paranoid to be completely confident. You know what I mean? All I'm thinking about really is how's my hair? How's your hair? I'm trying to find a way looking in that mirror there without you sort of. Yeah. Yeah, it's alright, but. Should have had that big nose bag in a taxi and primed me right out. What I'm doing in the jump section. Right, cheers, Aaron. <laughs> There's degrees of artifice to what I do, you know what I mean? Uh, but I don't manufacture feelings. I just... I don't really create emotional states. You know what I mean? I just take note of these apocalypses that occur in everybody's souls and I sing about them again and again every night. That's all. That's hard enough, you know what I mean? I don't have to live through it every second. I'm not that person, you know what I mean? That, that isn't me. If you want, I said you were life story. About a man who's at loggerheads with his past all the time He's alive and he's living in purgatory All he's doing is rooming in hotels and scooping up lots of wine Oh, there was once a boy of life He lived upon a knife he took his share off everywhere, but he never took a wife. Yeah, how should they fuck forever? Fuck forever. Fuck forever in Spanish is... Jodete para siempre. But it's not really good to right, say yeah, fuck man. forever. I'm not going to say it, I'm going to sing it. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I'm gonna say uh, Holly as well. Fuck forever is. Um, jodete. Jodete. Siempre. Siempre. Jodete por siempre. But fuck is a is a. Uh, I don't know, it's a hard word no, to it's say. Not fuck, but that doesn't mean fuck as in like. Okay, you. you on the bed, it means like fuck forever. Fuck forever. For, forget forever. about forever. What is the meaning in English of this sentence, fuck forever? It's like another meaning. Forget about forever. Forget. Fuck it. Okay, so you, you have. Maybe you can translate like. Um, olvídate. Forget in Spanish is olvida. Olvida. But. but, but olvida. But not. But, in an informal way of forgetting, like, mm. be done with it, be done with it. Yeah, I understand you. No. Because jodete is like hard. Laura. It's like... Laura. Mm. Laura. Yeah. Know, how is it? Uh, fuck is like motherfucker, you know, is a hard, yeah. hard word. Yeah. And the translate is jodete, and jodete is a, is a hard word. It's like a bad word. So everybody says it. Jodete, yeah. Jodete. Yeah, yeah. And you're the son of a god. He was born to live like a mercenary Personally, I think that's fine if you're in the right mind Just to finish, I would like to do two things. Could you please say to the camera, yes, hello, we are the baby same boys. And this name, Miradas Dos. We are the baby shambles. Shambling, shambling along. Miradas dos. Hey, again. I get the sense that your motivation as artists is the, the search of freedom and liberty. Do you feel free at this time of your life? All in one step way of life. Lived upon a night. He took his share of everywhere, but he never took a wife. He was born. Like a mercenary. Personally, I think that's fine. The media doesn't care about Pete Doherty. I can't put that point across uh, viciously enough. We do not have personal emotional relationship. He is newsprint, he is money, he is a story.
Do you have any sense of how often you're in the papers and all no, that sort of thing? Definitely not. I definitely avoid the Do you? reality. Yeah, absolutely. But you talk to the press quite a lot. No, I threw my face in my front door. Nine times out of ten, I'll boo them out of the way or ignore them. But yeah, one time out of ten, someone will catch me on a certain bounce. I respond to them, or I'll be on the run from something and I need a lift. I just jump in. Fuck it. Gives a lift there. Gives a lift there. Because they're always about. Mm. Can you tell there? We're just garbling there. Just get clean, and then it'll all be fucking. Yeah, years. well, I'm trying to, but Adam keeps booking fucking gigs. Well, you you could go if you want to go. Yeah, but it's just like always feel like oh, you're letting those go to down America to get a plate. It would all change if you, everything was talking about would change in that like that. I know. Well, this weekend I was. That kind of detox in. I know. I've got that bile. It's really that simple. <laughs> Can you tell that we're just like. Trying to imagine being in, in paradise and. Stretching out, enjoying it, and then whack, someone comes and kicks you in the butt. It was really hard. And then you sort of recover from that, you know what I mean? And forget it happened, and then again, you're enjoying paradise again. And that's it, that's my life. From one extreme to the other. And you're so glad. So glad when that pain goes. It's, it's like, I don't know. It's relief, and it's complete relief, and complete release. What do you think of all this, Lisa? Of all what? Well, the, just the sort of the press madness. Well, like I just said, I think, you know, so to be, I'll be honest with him, if he, if he gets, I hate to babble on about it, I'm sure he's sick of me saying it, but if he gets clean, I think all, the, all that stuff stops. They can't do yeah, it. No, There's a reason. Not. No, 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 Mick, I'm sorry. No, that no, is no, as simple as that. No, to be honest, if he did, well, he'd was fucking clean, loaded with a national junkie. hero. It because it's it's all all No, no, it wasn't even ex-junkie. When I had my implant last year, it was still junkie. Yes, but Peter, if you're honest, there was still the fucking the chaos. Do you know what I mean? It's like there was still stuff happening. And your life was still chaotic. If all that chaos disappears, all of that stuff disappears. I just think it's that simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do that sad thing or actually with everybody concerned it's the impact is that really when someone's in that state they're kind of it's about them it's, it, it, it's disease of addiction is, is a disease of self-centered kind of you know self-obsession da, da, da. so it's all about that person so the fallout of that is that you know it's, it's really really draining emotionally mentally and it's very tough you know on everybody concerned that's involved with him on whatever level it is <laughs> an ordinary soldier. Was, when I was born, he was just like, well, a squaddy, really. Was he? A, a sergeant or whatever. I lived in just a little, cool. you know what I mean? A little, a little terrace house on the barracks and 
He's from Council Estate in London, my mum's from Little Tennis House in Anfield, Liverpool. He's like, never ever working class, but where he's worked his way up. By the time I was sort of 15, I think it was, he was getting commissioned and it was a working class environment. It was like a soldier's environment and probably by the time I left school though, you know what I mean, I wouldn't... I don't think you could describe my, my dad as being my own class anymore. But did you go to a fee-paying school? Are you in a state school? Of course I did. Pardon? Of course I didn't go to a fee-paying school. My mum and dad couldn't afford to send me there. I mean, it's like when you see it written down, like a major in the British Army, you know what I mean? It doesn't say that, you know what I mean? He's been commissioned and he's like a hands-on major. He's not... And what was your childhood? I mean, do, did you enjoy being a kid? So that's important to me, though, as well. You see, very important to me, especially with the kind of coverage I've been getting. Um, very class conscious. Uh, it doesn't matter to me how how people think of me. You know what I mean? When they decide themselves on meeting me or. They decide themselves on reading lyrics or reading interview. But if they're told, you know, if they're misinformed and given the wrong information, it's like, it's, it's a kind of, like, once again, it's kind of vanity where I like, it's not so much I want to manipulate the information that's given, but I want to certainly like, have a control over it. You know what I mean? I want to know what people know. And if they, you if don't they have know any control, really, do you? <laughs> no. That's when French Dog Blues is going to come in. Did you enjoy being being part of your family, really? Uh, I wouldn't have known what, what I'm going to say now is, is that I wouldn't know what this would have meant at the time, but I can probably say, like, representing my younger self, that I was uh, completely, I completely adored my dad. Mm. Yeah. So I did absolutely idolise him. We well, obviously still I do. On Saturdays, it was like if he was about, and he'd come back from doing the night shift and guard shift, or whatever, and he'd take me into Belfast or, or Lisbon, and he'd say, "Oh, don't tell your mum," and he'd go into the bookmakers and leave me in the little the children's section of the library. And, a thin woman with glasses, she'd like keep her eye on me and it'd be half an hour. And then like later on that, that day, he'd say, oh, he'd be tucking me in or something because my mum must have been out somewhere. And he'd say that, like, when my mum used to like, say a little prayer, he'd say, oh, our father out in heaven, I'll be thy name. Thy kingdom come, I will go and, and please let my horse come in tomorrow at Kempton on the 3 to go. Um, I was only about six or seven, and even now I think, or well, the times before he's like this, before he's kind of disowned me, when he sort of told me how he felt, it was always negative, trying to answer back, there was such bewilderment in his eyes, you know what I mean? I was, you know, not what I was country at what he was saying, or, you know, have an idea of my own that didn't match his. It was such, you know, it was quite confusing to him, you know what I mean?
Pete Doherty has pleaded guilty to five counts of possessing drugs, including heroin and cocaine. He was granted bail until September the 4th on condition that he stays and sleeps out of the crime. Hey, hey, he will be allowed out this Sunday to play a concert. Mm. So that you may not be the martyred slaves of time, you must get intoxicated. Get intoxicated and never pause for rest. With wine, poetry, or virtue, as you choose. I can hear you, I can hear you. Now there be somebody who has caused you so much controversy. What are you saying to here? Oh my God. Oh my God. Welcome to the stage, Headline Media, Jan P. Doherty and Davy Shabbos! Big up to the Priory, and the Probation Service, and the Metropolitan Police. Being clean. Um. Well, maybe, maybe this is all right. I, mean, I don't think 
program of complete abstinence is for me. Yeah, you know what I mean? I can't imagine not having a drink at the moment. Mm. But um, it's beginning to dawn on me that I can't, basically can't smoke crack anymore. I can't air and because, not just because of the old bill, it's like, I can't believe I'm saying it really, but yeah, it's like, fuck my life, fuck my life up. Fucking my head up. Um, so yeah, I'm waging a war, kind of.
the media is waiting for him to die. You know, I wouldn't be at all surprised if, if they had bets. You know, it's the end of the story. Um, Truman Capote, the American writer, wrote a book called In Cold Blood, um, in which he covered a murder trial. And at the end, he, uh, he couldn't wait for these, these boys, these convicted murderers, to be executed. He spoke about it. He needed them to be executed, so he had an ending. And um, I know, I know it's been talked about in newsrooms, when's Pete Doherty going to die? And what a story it will be. Oh, yeah. What was that? Just adrenaline and all that, yeah? How fuck yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. thank God.
And more for Pete Doherty fans as he talks candidly to Kirsty Walk over on BBC Four in just a moment. Coming next here on BBC Two, a double bill of Arrested Development. I'd probably get put away for life if I got caught again. He's already served a sentence of nine years imprisonment, so he doesn't learn by his mistakes. I just need this chance at my life again. What there is with this young woman is that she is not necessarily what she seems. Lock them up or let them out continues tomorrow at nine on BBC Two. Three! If you're longing for the perfect life, be careful what you wish for. I'm not sure if I want this. Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God. With you. This is what being single is all about. We'll take things slowly. Let's go back to mine and get drunk. Living the dream. <gasps> Pulling. Coming soon on BBC Three. Now, when it comes to dysfunctional families, surely they don't get any worse than the Bluths. A double helping of comedy from BBC Two. <laughs> 